In this video, I want to talk about the slice feature in Machine. So let's go into the sampling tab up here. Um, we've already covered how to record and how to edit. And so now I want to talk about the slice tab over here. So we'll get to that in a minute. Um, first of all, I'm going to prepare my sample like I did in the last video. So, so what I have here is a drum break. Now what I want to do here is just do the same process. Let's go to the sound tab and make sure our polyphony is set to one and make sure our envelope is on one shot. And now we have a, a nice little um, one shot sample here and we can go ahead and apply some slices to this sample. So let's go ahead back into the sampling menu up here and make sure we are on the slice tab. Um, as always, before we actually start doing anything, let's see what the options are over here. Um, so if I turn this all the way to the left, uh, let's go through the different modes. First of all, we have split and that is just going to um, take your sample and divide it into an equal number of parts based on how many slices you want to have. So here it's going to divide it into four slices um, 16 and so on and so forth. Um, the next mode is going to be grid and this is going to take your sample and divide it into uh, lengths of certain notes. Um, that's going to be based on your project tempo. So um, if I have it on fourth, that's going to be quarter note. Um, if I have it on eighth, that's going to be eighth notes based on your project tempo. And again, you can kind of guess what's going to happen as you increase that slice tab there. Um, next we have detect. And this is cool, this is going to actually um, automatically add a slice point at different transients in your sample. So um, you can do this by changing the sensitivity. If I turn this all the way down, it's not going to make any slices, but as I increase it, it's going to be looking for uh, transients and then we'll add slice points in at those points. And then finally we have manual, and that's just going to be a total manual way you add your own slices, and, and that's not going to do anything for you. So if you feel like you wanna have control over the whole process, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on manual. Um, and then depending on what you do, you can select uh, one of these other modes over here. Um, I normally have it on split just because um, that one seems to make the most sense to me. Um, but if you have a, a drum sample that looks like this, this would actually be a good candidate for detect because you have very uh, distinct transients here. Um, the, the auto sensitivity will do a good job of catching those. Um, but anyways, I'm going to put it on split like I normally do and just show you how we can work with as we move on to the other process. Um, so select your mode, um, like I talked about, it's going to be depending on what you want to do, but um, select your mode, let's go and see how many slices we want. Um, again, that's also going to depend on your scenario, but um, for a short sample like I have here, I think it's just two bars, um, I'm going to just do, let's do eight slices here. I'll do eight slices and then um, you can select your BPM and that is going to be, um, usually I leave it on auto, but if you happen to know the exact tempo of your sample, you can go ahead and turn this on manual and add it in. You also have this adjust option over here and that's either going to uh, cut your tempo in half or double it. So um, if you want one of those options, go ahead and use that knob over here. Once we have everything set up in this left screen, let's go ahead and look at the right screen to get a preview of what's going to happen. Um, if you have everything good as you want it, go ahead and go into the edit menu to look at your individual slices. So once we enter here, it might be helpful to zoom in just using one of these knobs and we can take a look over here on the left screen and see what we can do. Um, so first of all, we have our slice knob. Um, this is just going to give us a way to select different slices. You can also just press the pad and that is going to select that one. I'll start with my first one over here. Then you also have start and end point for each of your slices. So um, if one of these doesn't sound good, you can go ahead and just bring the start point into wherever you want it. Um, let's go through here. So that's pretty close. If I wanted to get this right on, I can bring it in. There we go, I have a little bit of a gap, so I'll bring in the start point. And you can just go through your individual slices and really fine tune them to get the sound that you want. In this edit menu, you also have the option to add and remove individual slices. Um, so say you wanted to add one at the end, just go ahead and press the add button. Now you have nine slices, you can go ahead and change the points of this slice. And if you happen to not like it, just go ahead and remove it. And that's just nice because you can start with an automatic point like we did at the beginning and then add and remove slices as you see fit. It um, just makes it easier to customize the slicing option to your particular sample. Anyways, once we have everything as we want it, we can go ahead, exit the edit menu and actually apply these slices to our project. So uh, first of all, let's press this apply button and see what happens. Well, our pad turns to keyboard mode and we're actually on our, our pad that used to hold the sample, but it's back into keyboard mode and nothing actually plays right now because we have to go down some octaves. So let's go to keyboard mode and go all the way down as far as you can. And here you can hear the, uh, the slices. 
Um, a lot of people ask if you can get these to cut each other off. And um, you can do that by exiting keyboard mode here. Let's go to the polyphony of this sound and just turn it down to one. And that is going to prevent those slices from overlapping. Um, there's another way to apply these slices. I'm going to undo this till we get back to where we were. And you can also hit this apply to button instead of the apply button. So if I hit apply to, it's going to be waiting for me. I can either select a new group. You can see that it's flashing now. And um, I can either select that group or I can select a individual pad um, depending on what I want to do. Um, but I'm going to create a new group here and then hit apply. And now I have a new group and the slices instead of uh, being in keyboard mode are each on their own sound. Now, if I want these to cut each other off, I'll have to go into each one and set the choke group. I'm going to do that. Let's go to pad mode and change the choke group to one. Go ahead and do that for all of them. Or you can select multi, select sum, um, and then turn the group to one. Um, that is going to be the way to make these cut each other off. Now, the benefit of slicing like this and applying it to a new group is that you can add effects on each of these slices on an individual basis. Um, so say you just wanted to add an EQ on one of the slices, you could go ahead to the sound tab, put it on whatever one you wanted to. Um, but if you just applied it on a single pad as we did the first time, um, the slices in keyboard mode, if you try to affect one slice, it's going to affect them all. Um, so I almost always use this uh, to apply to a new group. That just gives me more flexibility and it's easier for me to work with. But anyways, that covers the full process from start to finish of slicing. Um, hopefully this video gets you going um, with the different options in the sampling menu. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you on the next video.